Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about five arguments that can be made if your case has been pending for a very long time at the National Visa Center and you still don't have an interview date. For those of you who are out there waiting, you know how frustrating this can be. Or if you're here in the United States and you're waiting for your husband, wife, children, or parent to come to the U.S., this video is for you as well. There are things that you can do proactively to get the process moving, to speed things along so that they could join you here sooner rather than later. But before I dive into those five arguments, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York. Reach out to us at 516 866 3900 or at mcbeanlaw.com where you can book your appointment. Also, guys, do me the favor before you leave today of subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell before you go today. Now, let's talk about this issue. What are the five arguments that can be made? This issue came up recently when we answered a question by from one of you through our newsletter, and the question says this. My son is a U.S.-born national. He filed an I-130 petition three years ago for me and I've been documentarily qualified at the NVC for the last 11 months. I've been waiting on an interview, but no interview came yet. I'm a single mother. I haven't seen my son for the last six years and I'm facing stress and depression. In our email or the newsletter, we mentioned that if uh, she seeks an expedited process and request at the NVC, she would be scheduled for an interview in a few months from the time that they've approved it on average that's how long it takes now have we seen it happen much sooner than that yeah we have we've seen it turn around in a matter of days for some clients for others though it usually takes a few months the first argument that can be made is that the petitioner has a serious medical condition the focus with this one is on the petitioner and if there is a serious medical issue going on with the petitioner medical evidence or records or a doctor's letter or something like that need to be submitted with the request for expedited processing. The second argument that can be made is that there's an urgent humanitarian reason. What is going on with the beneficiary in her country that, um, that is making her life there incredibly difficult? The third argument that can be made is that the beneficiary is experiencing severe trauma or has experienced severe trauma. The fourth argument that can be made is financial hardship, particularly financial hardship to the petitioner. Is the petitioner here in the United States going through a very, very difficult time financially? Perhaps he or she has recently lost a job or uh, they're facing bankruptcy, foreclosure, eviction, or something like that. It's, the pressure is on him or her uh, to get out of debt. There's a lot of debt. What is going on with the petitioner on the financial side that is really putting a lot of pressure on the petitioner? And how can the beneficiaries coming here to the United States assist with alleviating that financial hardship? talk about that. Lastly, you could argue that the petitioner needs you in the United States for health reasons. And you might be saying, well, isn't that the same thing as petitioner has a serious medical condition? And no, not really, because with the last argument that can be made, it can be, it doesn't have to be a serious medical condition like cancer or heart uh, failure or some big heart, you know, big uh, medical problem. It could very well be something like pregnancy. And we've seen how pregnancy works. It doesn't work in every case, but it can be helpful to some cases. Now, just to summarize, friends, again, the five reasons that can be argued when you're seeking an expedited request are, uh, number one, the petitioner has a serious medical condition. Number two, there's an urgent humanitarian reason. Number three, you have experienced severe trauma in your country. Number four, financial hardship. And number five, the petitioner needs you here in the United States for health reasons. I will also say this, that if you've gone to the embassy before, if you've been there and you were denied for a visa based on some inadmissibility issue or a problem they've had in your background, work with a professional to prepare you for the interview and make sure you have the appropriate documents in place to bring with you to your embassy interview. If you'd like to receive our newsletter so that you're not missing out on our Q&As and other information we share with folks, click the link below in the description box so that you can get on my email list. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.